Hey guys, Liam here, your favorite Steam Deck and Linux desktop content creator who apparently does a lot of whining and balls haven't dropped, okay? Where do people keep coming up with this stuff? <clears throat> I mean, where do people keep coming up with this? There's two bits of big Steam Deck news today. The first is that a major new stable Steam Deck client update was released. This gives us a whole bunch of new features and there's some really great bug fixes added too. So here is a little rundown of what to expect from it. Firstly, to get the update, head to your system settings and then check for updates. It might need you to check twice as sometimes the first refresh doesn't find the update. Then it will need a reboot and you are good to go. This is basically all of the recent beta updates they've been doing bundled into one and released as stable. The first update I'm going to show you here is the change to the launch options user interface for games that have multiple ways to launch them, and you can now make it keep your choice, while having an option in the properties menu to change that choice and revert it at any point. It's only a small thing, but just a little nice touch. There's been further optimizations done for those of you with big Steam libraries, which I especially enjoy seeing as I have over 2,500 games to sift through, and when I want to pick what to play next, Steam can sometimes be a bit sluggish so any improvements there is very welcome. You will also now find that they've pinned certain types of notifications in the quick access notifications menu so you don't actually miss anything. Things like offline chat messages, trade offers and more, so never again will you have to tell a friend, sorry I was on deck and I completely missed your chat. There's various fixes to the user interface for higher resolutions, good for those of you like me who love to dock your Steam Deck up to a nice TV. And the on-screen keyboard also now has an option to move the position, along with it having up and down arrow keys, which can be really useful if you don't have a physical keyboard, like in the terminal being able to just scroll back up through what you've entered before. There are absolutely loads of Steam input changes as well that came with this update, like being able to actually preview a configuration without it being picked instantly and applied as soon as you go on to look at it. So now you can actually view different configurations and then only press X to apply it if you actually want to change to it. Again, it's another small tweak to the way something works, but overall much nicer. Valve also added in support for the Armor X Pro gamepad in PS4 mode. They added layout previews for the Xbox Elite controller, the Switch Pro controller, and they added support for the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro controller for Xbox, and they also even improved the layout preview for Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, and various bug fixes to different controllers and layouts. Desktop mode Steam should work better overall now too as well, with multiple crash bugs fixed. Rendering issues with the Steam library were solved as well, so it's no longer a grey blank screen. And the new big picture mode is now the default for desktop as well, along with many improvements to how the new big picture mode actually works. So it's a whole lot of smaller tweaks with plenty of bug fixes in between. While it may not be any major new features, it's often the small things that add up to make the experience better or worse, so it's nice to see Valve focus on every bit of the experience. The other major issue to talk about today is that Ubisoft have updated Ubisoft Connect, and any of their games that use it will no longer run. This includes the likes of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, The Division 2, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and the list goes on. When you try to actually launch one of them, you'll just end up seeing an error box and that's about as far as you can get now. This is similar to what happened when the EA app replaced Origin and we had to wait for Valve to actually fix the app updating in Proton. I've actually filed a bug report on this myself and I've given them various logs from different games on it and I've notified the Proton developers directly as well and I've seen that they are looking into it. The fun thing is, as I was recording this, I noticed that Valve already updated Proton Experimental's Bleeding Edge Beta, which should already solve the Ubisoft Connect problem. You can find it by looking for Proton Experimental in your Steam library, going into the properties on it, into the betas, and selecting Bleeding Edge, and then let it update. An important note though, 
This will then use the Bleeding Edge beta for any game that you have set to Proton Experimental. And because it hasn't really had any big testing yet, it could come with a whole host of other problems, so be careful. It might be better just to hold off for a normal Proton update, but for now, at least with that quick tip, it'll get you going again after you set your game to Proton Experimental and then trying to launch it again. But it is again showing how these extra launchers are just a huge pain in the butt. That's it for today's little news video though. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you later.